One of the biggest challenges in astrophotography is how do you capture the beautiful stars but without all of that horrible noise in the background. You can add a bit of noise reduction in Lightroom or Photoshop for example, but that can often reduce a bit of the detail in the stars or it can kind of make the image look a bit plasticky or cartoon-like. Hey everyone, I'm Jason Roberts and in this video I'm going to show you a free tool that I use to get all the benefits of noise reduction but with none of the problems. The technique that we're going to use in this video is called image stacking where we take multiple images of the same photo and then stack them together to increase the signal to noise ratio. You can think of the signal as the starlight itself and the noise as being the thing that we don't want. By increasing the signal and decreasing the noise you can really bring out the detail in your star photos. There is one very minor downside however and that's that it takes a few minutes longer in the field when you're actually out there shooting your photos. But I promise you if you take those few extra minutes in the field and make use of this software I'm about to show you, you're going to end up with much better images. Let's head into the computer now and I'll show you this technique in action. So here we are in Lightroom, we've got these nine images here and we're going to stack all of these images together to reduce the overall noise in the image. When you're shooting for stacking, make sure you use the same settings for ISO, aperture, shutter speed and also make sure the focus is the same for all of the images. Let's go and develop this first image and I'm going to zoom in down here and you can see that we've got all of this noise. Lightroom's defaulted to give us some colour noise reduction here, if I turn that off things get even worse. And notice what happens if I try and add some noise reduction in Lightroom. Notice as I increase this slider the amount of noise goes away but things start to become a bit more plasticky and we start to lose some detail especially in the fainter stars. Notice how the image has gone a bit more plasticky looking, hopefully that comes through on the YouTube compression and if I increase this all the way to the end you can see that it's looking very cartoon like now and if I turn that off you can see we get a lot of the stars back in the sky there and if we increase that notice some of the stars actually disappear. So we don't want to lose too much detail in the stars if possible. The first thing you're going to want to do is download the free software we're going to be using here called Sequitor. I'll put a link down in the description to this website. And you just need to come over to the download tab and then download the tool. Once you've downloaded it, you need to unzip it and then you can run the application. The first time you run this application, you might get a security warning from Windows. And if you decide to go ahead and run the application, then Sequitor will open. Once you open Sequitor, it will look like this. And wherever you see a red dot, that means that we need to perform some action. So you can see there's red dots here for star images and output. The first thing you need to do is come up here and double click on star images. This is going to let you choose the images that you want to stack together. And if you look in this acceptable formats drop down here, you can see you can use raw files, uncompressed TIFFs or JPEGs. I wouldn't use JPEG images unless that's all you happen to have for some reason. When you're out shooting, you should make sure you shoot raw images. You can also choose between raw images and TIFF images. You can use TIFFs if you want to make some minor adjustments, for example to the shadow in the foreground, before you go and stack the images. Raw is recommended by the creator of Sequitor however, but the output will still be a TIFF file. So if you want to pull some of that extra detail out of the raw image before you stack it, then you're going to want to work with TIFFs. I'm going to show you the TIFF workflow in this video because the raw flow is essentially the same once you select the images in Sequitor. Let's just cancel this for the moment and we'll go and head back to Lightroom. If I just head back to grid view, what we're going to do is we're going to edit this first photo. So I'm just going to hit D to go to the develop tab. Notice all of these photos are the same photo, just exposed multiple times. Because we're going to use the TIFF workflow in this video, we can go and make some minor changes to bring out some detail. For example, we could use a gradient here over this foreground, just reset that effect. And then we could try and bring out a bit of the shadow detail in that foreground. Not going to spend too much time here. If you want to, you can also go and make some other minor adjustments here. I'm not going to do that in this video. And then you want to come down to the detail tab. You're going to want to make sure that you turn off all of the sharpening here. You're going to want to make sure that the noise reduction and color noise reduction is also turned off. And also, if we come down to the lens corrections tab here, you can try turning on these things and then doing the stacking. But if you get some weird results, you might want to try disabling these things when you're first trying Sequitor out. So essentially, we've got an image with no sharpening, no lens correction, and just a little bit of shadow boosting for the foreground here. Other than that, this is a raw image. Just going to hit G to head back to grid view. What we want to do is make sure all of the images that we're going to stack have the same settings. So what I'm going to do is make sure I've clicked on the first image that we just changed and then click on the last image and then just head over here and choose this sync settings button. 
What that's going to do is give us the option here, I'm just going to check all, and it will add the develop settings to all of these other photos. Basically taking the changes we made in that first photo and applying them to all of the other photos. Now if I develop this third one and just come over to the gradient, notice that this gradient has been copied across. So now we know all of these raw files have the same develop settings applied, we can go and export them as TIFFs. So I'm just going to select all of these, right click and come down to export. The first thing you want to do is set an export location. So here I'm just going to create a folder on the desktop, I'm just going to call this new folder Astro and select that. You don't need to perform any file renaming. And for the file settings here, you want to make sure you're using TIFF to get the best quality. You can leave the color space as sRGB, make sure you don't have any compression and make sure that the bit depth is set to 16 bits. You want to make sure that you're not resizing the image. You want to get the maximum amount of detail and you also want to make sure that this sharpening is not clicked. You can then go and export these images. That's the export complete and you can see we've got these nine TIFF images now. Now we can head back to Sequitor, double click on star images here, navigate to the Astro folder and we can select all of these TIFFs. If you were working with raw files here and not TIFFs, you'd just select the nine raw files. Let's just click open and you can see over here, Sequitor has loaded all of these TIFF files. In this example, we're stacking nine images together, but how many images should you actually stack in Sequitor? I'd suggest an absolute minimum of four images. And if you have time out in the field, I'd suggest shooting maybe eight to 16 if you have the time. Shooting 16 or more images will give you better results, but there's a law of diminishing returns. It's gonna take longer out in the field to shoot and the more photos you take, the more the stars will move through the sky. So basically, if you're not using a tracker to move the camera and stay locked on to the same point in the sky, I'd suggest shooting anywhere from six to 12 images. If you have the time, Time, feel free to go ahead and shoot 16. You don't have to use them if they cause problems during stacking. Notice here that Sequitor has automatically selected this base image. Automatically it will select from the middle of the selection. So we've got image 1145 here which is coming from the middle of the images we chose. If you want to you can double click and choose your own base image but we don't really need to do that in this case. The base image is the reference that all of the other images will be aligned to and stacked on top of. The noise images and vignetting images here are optional. A noise image, also called a dark frame, is a photo taken with the lens cap on at the same time as you take your star photos out in the field. You need to take these dark frames before or after your star images when you're out in the field and they can help Sequitor remove hot pixels. We won't be using them here. We've also got a red dot on this output item. Let's double click that. And now we can choose a file name for the output TIFF. I'm just gonna call this stacked. Save that. Because we've got a foreground in this image, but as we take the photos, the stars are slightly moving in the sky, we need to tell Sequitor that we actually want to fix the foreground, but align the stars. To do this, we're going to come over to the composition here, and we're gonna come down here and tick this option, freeze ground. We've also got this tick box selective, which we can turn off or on. If we turn this on, it will try and remove airplane trails and meteors or other moving noise in the image. You might want to play with this off and on. Sometimes stars can come out smaller and sharper. Try both options and see if you like them. It is really handy though to be able to automatically remove meteors and satellites and things like that. Notice because we've chosen freeze ground, this item has gone red. So we need to come up here and click on sky region and we need to tell Sequitor which area is the sky and which area is the land. You can do something like boundary line here where you just draw a single line. That's useful if you've got a really flat horizon, but if you've got some kind of irregularly shaped horizon, come down and choose irregular mask, and then you get this big painting tool. And all you need to do here is draw where the sky is in relation to the land. So I'm just drawing in the sky here. And if you want to visualize this, click the auxiliary highlight checkbox here and notice how all of this red is highlighting the land. We've actually got a bit of the cloud being highlighted there. So I'm just going to remove that and then you can turn that off. We've also got this auto brightness setting here. If you perform the stacking and the final image comes out too bright, you can try turning this on. It will actually allow for some small overexposure though. We've got this HDR option. This will attempt to max out the range of lights and darks in the output bits of the final image. You can try this out if you're going to be doing a lot more processing of the image after stacking. I'm gonna leave this off for now. We've got this reduced dynamic noise option. This will attempt to remove hot pixel if there's no dark frame being used. But I suggest if you want 
want to try and control hot pixels in your images, you might want to try the dark frames technique instead. We've got this reduce distortion option. If I just double click on that, you can choose between telescope or telephoto or complex here. This reduce distortion effect option will attempt to correct some distortion in the image. For example, if you've got stars near the horizon and they're being distorted due to atmospheric refraction, or for example, if you've got some lens distortion as the stars move through the different areas of the lens in the different photos. You can select the tele option here for telescope images or long telephoto lens images, and you can choose complex for non-telescope and wide angle lenses. So let's leave that set to complex because this was shot with a 20 millimeter lens. There's also this reduce light pollution option. You can try this, but you might get some ugly results. I would suggest trying your image without this first, and then if you've got a lot of light pollution problems, try restacking it with this turned on. We've also got this enhance starlight option. I would try doing some stacking with this turned off to begin with. This will attempt to brighten the stars while leaving the sky dark. Once again, do the initial stack with this turned off and see what you think. Next, there's this merge four pixels option. I would suggest that you don't use this. Basically, what it's going to do is take every four pixels and merge them together which is going to reduce in the output file being only a quarter of the resolution of the input file. Basically this option is going to try and increase the sensitivity to the stars in the image to make the stars look brighter. So I'd suggest not using this in most cases. And finally we've got this time lapse option which lets you specify a number of frames here and allows you to create a stack for every group of specified number of frames if you're creating a time lapse. So I'm just going to double click and turn this off because we're not doing a time lapse here. So the main thing in this image was to freeze the ground and then set the sky region. Once you've chosen your settings, you just need to come down here and click start. This is going to load and analyze all of the images and it does this pretty quick. You can see it's going through all of these TIFF files pretty quickly. These are 61 megapixel TIFF files as well, shot with the A7R4 and that's the processing complete. So that only took 14 seconds to perform the stacking. Make sure you hit the like button for this video, that really helps me out. And now we can go and look at the output folder. So here's our original nine TIFFs and here's the stacked TIFF file. So here's the original raw file that we started with. And here's the stacked image we just created. You can see the amazing difference in noise here. And here's a version that just used the noise reduction slider in Lightroom. If we compare the Sequitor version and the Lightroom noise reduction version, notice that we've lost some detail in the Lightroom version here. Also notice that the image is starting to look a bit more cartoony or plasticky now. Tag me on Instagram at Jason Roberts if you make use of this technique. I'd really love to see your astrophotography images. And also make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. And I'll see you in the next one.